Michael Adams is a curious cat who asks great questions and steers a research group called Environics. His latest research is on how Canadian baby boomers, the ones who claim they know everything, uh, play and find meaning in the second half of their adult lives. Adams is a boomer with a business and a new book he calls Staying Alive. It is my pleasure to welcome Michael Adams back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Good morning, Patty. Nice to see you again. Again, yes, this is number six mm -hmm. in my opus. I remember, I think I interviewed you on Fire and Ice, the one about the United States, Canada, and the myth of converging values. We started with Sex in the Snow. We did. We had a very Canadian beginning to our conversation. Very Canadian. That was about Canadian social values. Yes, and now I've come back to have a look at the boomers to see how mm -hmm. they've changed in the last 20 years. And you are a boomer. I am born on September 29th, 1946, because my mother, a higher authority, told the doctors, my Michael will be born on the, on the feast of St. Michael the Archangel. Really? And I've been a devil ever since. You probably have been. We'd have to ask Ma. <laughs> However, I was born on the 28th of September, not telling you the year. Okay. But I'm going to call myself a boomer. Oh, you, uh, I'm really close. In spirit. I'm really close. Okay. We're not dead yet. Not dead yet. We're going to live another 20 years after retirement. Mm. Our parents only lived another 10. How are we uh, not like our parents? Uh, you say we're not becoming our parents. No, we're not. We're not. We're just as bad as we used to be, and it's just a matter we're a little older, but we want to do the same stuff that we've always wanted to do. And in fact, retirement or semi-retirement will allow us to do some of mm. those things. And fortunately, we have a reasonably good uh, pension system in the country with old age security, the income supplement, Canada pension plan, RSPs, et cetera, et cetera. Most of us are going to be okay, and our expenses, the material phase of our life is over. Now we have the experiential phase. And as I said, our parents were going to live maybe 10 years after retirement. Mm -hmm. Well, they said, let's put up our feet and rest. And we're saying, resting for 20 years? I'll be dead in 20 days, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So now we're thinking, well, maybe, you know, with another, you know, with another 20 years to go, and those of us who are taking care of ourselves, we're going to, it's going to be 30 years, and we're not all going to get Alzheimer's. All the terrible stuff we fear is not mm -hmm. going to happen to everybody, and if we all behave that way, it'll be pretty depressing. Most of us are going to be fine. And we're going to then try to realize some of those things, that we want, the projects that we wanted to do in our life. So as uh, Moses Neimer calls us, we really are Zoomers. Well, there are some that are really, yeah, on speed, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> that are Zoomers. But yeah, we're, our sense is that this, and, and I say it in the subtitle, the second half of our adult lives. So the way we've got it organized now, the first third of our lives is sort of youth. And women aren't having babies till they're 28, 29, 30. Mm -hmm. So they're young people for the first third. Then they have this child phase, one or two kids. The kids get launched. We're going to live another third of our life, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't spend that third sleeping and watching television. No. Heavens, no. <laughs> Except fact, for this program. This will keep you going. Well, but this yes. This will tell you to go out mm -hmm. and do stuff. But right? as you know, people at 70 are taking up rollerblading. They're doing they are. everything. They're doing, we have Canadians who are saying, okay, we're going to go abroad. We're going to go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Not to lie for sun and sand on the beach. We're going to live somewhere. I'm going to learn Spanish. We're going to get connected to the local public school because I used to be a teacher. And we're going to do something sure. different, right? It's time we should do. And mm -hmm. it's often interesting that it's spouses who have, the, they're saying, okay, you've been busy doing this, but doing that, let's do some projects together. Now, it's interesting, the men think they're going to spend more time with their wives than the wives want to spend with the men. I love it. <laughs> that, I love that percentage. It was something like 38% of women say, not doing that. Yeah. Don't want to spend more time with my spouse. Yeah. And the man says, love to spend more time yeah. with my spouse. And of course, a lot of us don't have spouses. Well, and what then they we spend time with their buddies. Or they go off on a, some pursuit mm -hmm. where they try to find people like themselves. They'll find Americans like themselves or Europeans and so on. And you never know where life's going to take you. And by the way, you don't have to then lock down in a full-time sure. relationship. You can have fun with people. And friends, of course, are what we have, right, in placement mm -hmm. of relatives that are compulsory. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of chance to do cool stuff with your friends in, in that last third. When we go to the I'm a Goner home, mm -hmm. We will want private chefs yes. and uh, rock walls to climb, things like that. Yeah, I mean, some think? stuff, you know, I mean, I don't know whether we ought to be doing stuff that's physically, you know, dangerous, <laughs> but there's a lot of things that aren't, you know, walking, number one. I mean, the way people are living these days, they're driving their car to the corner store. This mm. is time for boomers, you know, as they retire to get out mm. of the bloody car, 
start walking, uh, maybe if you want to jog, but get on a treadmill, get on a bicycle, start moving. And sure. actually, that's, that's a great formula for getting your heart moving, work up your appetite, glass of wine, it could be pretty nice. It could be, after Pilates class. Yes. So uh, you, you always divide uh, us into tribes. Of course. Four tribes. Uh, let's go through it again, okay. in case somebody didn't see it the last time. Yes, okay. Uh, autonomous rebels. Yes, these are, are the defining segment. They are the first ones to question religion. They said, I'm not going to church anymore, I don't believe this stuff. Uh, they question patriarchy. The first feminists are there. The first environmentalists. These everything's political for these people, right? Mm -hmm. They've been fighting a lot of battles, right? Um, so that's that first group, the autonomous, and they're still there. They're still fighting battles, and they'll take on the telephone company and they'll take on some monopoly that's pushing them around and fight back. And mm -hmm. they're now using technology to do that, right? Mm -hmm. They're tweeting. They're on Facebook, and they're going to fight back. So they're still going to have their Larry David moments where if you don't treat them <laughs> like God. Right. They'll think it's, oh, what do you got against me? Right, and Larry David is a boomer. And he's a boomer. Yes, you write that in here, I believe. Uh, so there's an autonomous rebel tribe. How many of us are that, do you well, think? Well, we're about 20% of the, of, the, of the boomers. Are, are, but okay. they were, the, again, the first ones to go to university. So they were the cutting edge of their parents' dreams. Get an education, do well, come home when you want to, kind of. Okay, kid. yeah, demonstrated yeah. against war. Everything, all yeah, idealism, right, all the way mm -hmm. through the 60s and 70s and so on, yeah. Okay, then there's the connected enthusiasts. Oh, yes, yes. And did they ever love new technology, particularly the pill, which liberated <laughs> right. plenty of people to have a little free mm -hmm. love and so on. So these were the fun-loving people. Um, they went to the revolution, but they went there for, you know, mm -hmm. other purposes other than just Peace, overstand. love, dove. No, uh, yeah, they, yeah, make love and, well, yeah, make love yes. and war was a, a joke of the 60s. So they were there to connect with other people. Friends are very important. Work was kind of secondary. But I find these people have evolved in a very interesting way, and that is, is that as they are moving into their 50s and 60s, they're starting to say, okay, especially if they're the women, okay, I did my thing. Now I'd like to start maybe to do something else, like a new business, or right. I'll go on into an NGO mm -hmm. and do something there. So they've got a lot of energy, and again, particularly the women. The guys look like they've been in a bureaucracy, and once out of it, they never want to report to another jerk again in their life. The women, of course, have had to report to the bureaucracy of the family and are saying, now the kids are launched, what about mm -hmm. me? What am I going to do? And so there's a heck of a lot of energy among uh, women in their sure. 50s and 60s to do stuff. I, I find my female friends uh, following their true passions. Mm -hmm. uh, if they were young artists yeah. and they've been working in a cubicle for 30 years, they are now doing art seriously, yeah, like yeah. painting seriously yeah. with a vengeance. Yeah, yeah, I mm -hmm. can do that and why not do it? Why not? And they get a bunch of friends who support them and so on. So that's the second group and they're mm -hmm. about 20% too. So now you're about 40% of the Canadians and these are the ones, they're better off, they're better educated and they're typically a better, more healthy sure. than the others because they think they're in control of their health, not the doctor, not a pill, not a machine. They're in control, of course. That's the best position to have because then you're taking care of yourself, your diet, exercise, and right. so on. So that's sure, that group. I'm sure that it's the group that engages in, in, uh, in alternative therapies, alternative medicine. Uh, if somebody says to you, put chia seeds in your water, it will make you live longer, they're the first to put the chia seeds in the water. There's a route in Tibet for these people, but when they cut their finger, they do go to the doc, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Because the, the herb mm. might take a little while, so they do both, right? Sure. Uh, can you be a combo? Could you be a little bit autonomous rebel and a little bit connected enthusiast, or do you have to b uh, stay in one tribe? I know one person who was this. I'm speaking to her now. I the know. autonomous enthusiast. I, I but it's hard am. to pronounce, so I didn't create such okay. a tribe. But you, no, you can have a little bit of both, and you might have a little bit of the other two tribes in you as well. Depending on the day. Yes. So the third tribe, uh, if we can call it the third tribe, a disengaged Darwinist. These are actually the biggest tribe, right? Over four in ten of us. And these are typically guys who don't actually like the way the world has gone, mm -hmm. like feminism, like multiculturalism, like um, same, sex, same marriage. sex marriage, you name it. Like there's just one insult after the other. And it seems like an assault on what a traditional male hero was. 
men, traditional male heroes, right? They go off to war, <laughs> right. you know, uh, they play rock'em, sock'em hockey. Uh, they do all sorts of stuff that uh, reveres Ooh. what a man is. Drive and they a big feel, car. They have an SUV, you know. Mm -hmm. I had a neighbor who, who bought a Hummer because he was upset that Canada <laughs> didn't go, a war, go to war in Iraq just to show sympathy for <laughs> no. the Americans. And right? he's the disengaged Darwinist. Darwinist right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they religious, disengaged no, not, Darwinists? No, in, in, uh, in Canada they're not. In the United States they are more likely to be. Mm -hmm. But here, no, they're, they're actually disengaged from religion as well. They just stay away from any of this stuff. And it's really, uh, now they have very positive qualities as well. Family is important to them. We asked, we had a bucket list of what people are going to try to achieve by the end of their life. One of the guys says he wants to build a cottage for the kids. You know, and he'll build the thing, mm -hmm. like the frame, like the wiring, right. the plumbing, and then with the hope that maybe they'll invite him over for uh, dinner someday. Uh, politically more to the right? More to the right, yeah. They would lean to be tough on crime, time for us to mm -hmm. stand shoulder to shoulder with our military allies, runs a bit against, it's a backlash against all this peacekeeping, uh, you know, the, that sure. thing that we in build In the out. States, a Tea Party might be their party. They might just want to bite back in that way, just saying everybody's against us, it's Wall Street against us, it's politicians against us, and so on. So you get a lot of that sure. uh, lashback or backlash against the big authorities with a lot of money and a lot mm -hmm. of power, and uh, they don't like it too much. And then, last but not least, the anxious communitarians. Ah, oh, yes. The anxious communitarian is a bit more like her mom than the other boomers are like their parents. So this is the woman who lives her life in duty and self-sacrifice for her spouse, mm -hmm. for her parents, for his parents. Dear, could you visit my mother? You're good at this. And for the kids. She's worried about everybody. And she's the housekeeper. She's making sure everybody is happy. She's uh, maybe um, volunteering at the church mm -hmm. for the seniors program and the Meals on Wheels and stuff like that. So she's kind of the glue of the sure. family. She's on the cell phone talking to people like twice or three times a day just to exchange emotionally with somebody, a daughter somewhere, mm -hmm. maybe mom in the nursing home. So she's really caught in the sandwich and is anxious, also less, less educated, less control over her life and there are more things that she fears. But as we age, Yes. We need a lot of anxious communitarians to take care of us. One of the problems with the boomers is, unlike their parents, is they're not volunteering. They've been very busy mm. and they're very autonomous. And so it's number one first. You don't do your duty first. You do you first, right? Your happiness. So one of the things we're finding in all these volunteering studies is we've got a, the boomers coming into old age and they may be thinking about me and not the community. Mm -hmm. And the anxious communitarians, they're the ones that we rely upon to continue the tradition right. of volunteerism where your reward is just the joy of making someone else happier or less sad. So and we're losing that with the boomers. Right, so you're saying uh, most boomers are not very altruistic. No, they are busy. Mm. And when we had the tsunami, they, of course, it happened around Christmas time. They were all mm. out shopping for presents for everybody. And the tsunami came in, uh, in the Indian Ocean. Yes. Uh, a third of them, I think it was a third to a, uh, 40%, went click click and gave 50 or 100 or 150 bucks. They're willing to do that. So they're more likely to give their money, you know, on an emotional impulse saying, mm -hmm. gee, I got to do something, you know, what could I do in Libya to help the rebels? What could I do, you know, in Zimbabwe to help those poor people? And uh, so you'll see them wanting to engage, but they're busy. And so they're more likely mm -hmm. to do click click, uh, my visa, cut you know, uh, 50 bucks to sure. the cause, to the Red Cross or World Vision. So they do it that way. Now, as they get into their old age, however, they may see, okay, now I've got some time to do some of those things. But um, the volunteering won't be there. It's going to have to be fun. It's probably going to have to be engaged with different, maybe different places. They may be more likely actually to go abroad than they would mm -hmm. actually to take on a project in Canada to help the poor in Canada or something. That sounds kind right. of you know, not sure. as interesting uh, as maybe going to Mexico or something or to, like that. Or, or to Tahiti, to Ten Bar. Well, Why not? that would be, yes, I'm That'd sure be fun. to help the bartender. Mm -hmm. That's a big project. Of course. <laughs> Michael Adams, our guest, Staying Alive, a new book, How Canadian Baby Boomers Will Work, Play, and Find Meaning in the Second Half of Their Adult Lives. We'll come back.